Do you have information inside of Confluence that you sometimes wish your end users could more easily access without having to come into your Confluence? Well, in today's special sponsored video, I might have the answer for you. Let's take a look at them better for Confluence. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, drop a like if you get value out of this video, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And as I mentioned, this is a sponsored video, so that's just my disclaimer. Let's jump into Embedder for Confluence, take a look at some of the functionality, take a look at some of the pricing, and I'll give you my expert level opinion as to whether you should go try it out or not. Okay, so here we are in Embedder for Confluence. One of the things here is that you get a 30-day trial, and just keep in mind that based on the number of users that you have in your Confluence instance, that your price is gonna vary, but you do get 30 days free. Now, what exactly is Embedder for Confluence? Well, let me give you the 10 second summary, right? So if you have pages, if you have information inside of Confluence and you want your users to be able to access, maybe reference an FAQ or a guide on how to do something, maybe you're developing a mobile app, maybe you have a special website for your product and you have information in Confluence but you don't wanna use guests, you don't wanna expose your Confluence page to the whole world, you can actually use this Embedder for Confluence and take snippets. You can get specific information from Confluence, drop in some Java code into your app or to your website, and now you'll have a little button that will allow your end users to reference information within Confluence all without leaving your website or your mobile app. So we'll take a look at a demo at how that looks. Let's keep going through the Embedder for Confluence marketing material. Confluence content anywhere. Embedder for Confluence lets you insert widgets on any web page for quickly access to any Confluence space. It's a super easy setup. So once you install it, all the space admins that have the ability to generate a unique code snippet per space, just insert that snippet on a web page and you're all set. Now I think this is really cool. Now it's hard for me to demonstrate because I don't have a website. I don't have a mobile app that I'm developing right now but this is really, really interesting. So based on the space, maybe you have a space where you do have information like a how-to or an FAQ, and you want your end users to be able to reference that. So you just have your Confluence administrator, generate that snippet, give it over to your developers, and now they can embed it. Now, embedding it, while this all sounds trivial, you actually have some configuration options. So let's take a look at what we have here. Some of the quick access, right, is that you can actually modify, you can customize it. So we're actually gonna switch on over to Embedder for Confluence's documentation here. And let me show you some of the things here, right? So what you can do is you can actually customize how and what comes over. So not only are you just going to be getting a link, but you can actually configure quite a few things like the colors, the button size, the size of the window, the widget width. There's a bunch of different configurations here, lots of different colors that you can change to make your experience as unique and as personalized as possible. So it's not just a matter of embedding a simple widget that's just there. You can actually add a little bit of your brand's representation within the widget itself. Now, what does it actually look like when we actually embed it? Well, luckily for us, Embedder for Confluence has a live demo. You can come and try it out so that you can see firsthand before you even embed any code into your website. You can try it out firsthand and see if this is something you're gonna like. So let's take a look here. So this is their live demo, and you can basically see that this is just a regular page. And what you can do is you can essentially have this little help button down here. And when you click on this little help button down here, this will basically pop up Confluence. Now this is starting to look and feel a little bit like Confluence. Obviously it's in a different window, but you can essentially bring in whatever you want. And now I can go to an FAQ here, and it's going to load a page and just basically bring in information that is currently hosted somewhere in Confluence, and I can bring it in. My end users can see it. They have the ability to contact us, they have the ability to pop it out, and they also have the ability to search, which is really, really powerful. So you're basically bringing the Confluence experience into your website or your mobile app. And I think this is really key. This is really powerful because how you serve up information to your end user is really, really critical for retention, for customer satisfaction and whatnot. So if you're basically redirecting your users to another page, to somewhere external from the app or the mobile app that you're in, that really disrupts the flow. You might be hurting yourself. And so I think, in my professional opinion here, this would be worth it. This would be a kind of neat system so that you can bring the data and keep the users inside of their flow. 
And so if, especially if they're going to consider buy something from you, you don't want them to go reference your documentation elsewhere when you can bring the documentation into their experience and just be able to answer any of their questions there without them having to leave and potentially lose getting a new customer. So this is really, really cool. Now, my only hesitation is we are embedding JavaScript code. So is it safe? Is it, is it actually going to introduce vulnerabilities? Well, that I can't answer. But if you are concerned about that, let me know in the comment section below so that I can go back to the vendor. Hey, so I just want to let you know that I actually did reach out to the vendor and they were able to provide me with some additional information. Now, they didn't actually give me a link, but they gave me a really, really long email. I'm not going to include that, but they do assure me that they did do their testing, that they did do their due diligence to make sure that the app is safe. But nonetheless, I am still going to encourage you because ultimately the responsibility falls on you to ensure that whatever it is you're coding, whatever it is you're embedding to your websites is secure based on your standards. So don't come after me, don't come after the vendor, but just do your own due diligence. I will link, however, to some information that I was able to find online and that's all going to be in the description down below. Back to the rest of the video. But that's pretty much it. I do want to basically look at the pricing just one more second here. So just looking at the details, depending on the number of users that you have, they're going to have different pricing tiers. So as you can see, it's really, really cheap. Starts at about $4, a little bit expensive on the free side, but after you, most people, most folks that are not going to be on the, on the free version of Jira or free version of Confluence, they're going to be in one of these brackets, at which point it's 40 cents, then drops down to a quarter and 10 cents. And then after a thousand users, you're talking about a nickel each. And so super, super affordable. It might be a great way to, again, expose and get good information to your end users without disrupting that flow. But I do urge you to go do that pros and cons analysis. But other than that, I think this is a really cool feature. I can't wait to actually have an opportunity to try this out in a real world scenario. I was looking at the demo. I like the demo. I like the, the just the fluidity of it. I love the feasibility of it. I love how easy it is to just not not have to leave. That's really the most important part, folks, here is if I'm if I have a landing page, a product page, an informational page, and I'm expecting my user to make a purchase and they just want help, they want to answer some questions, this is a great way of tapping in to an existing knowledge base. Because sure, you could recreate an FAQ, but now you don't have a single source of truth. And whenever you violate the policy, the principle of not having a single source of truth, you're asking for a maintenance nightmare. So this plugin here definitely helps alleviate with that. And I really do think it helps in improve the end user that customer service experience so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it keep in mind again this is a sponsored video so go check out the link below go try it out let me know if you like it let me know if you don't like it let me know if you have any concerns then anything else let's go, go talk to the vendor so if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed please make sure you subscribe if you found value in this video make sure you drop a thumbs up and if you have any questions comments or concerns let me know in the comment section below thanks and i'll see you in the next one it's only worth it if you work for it it's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now